This is Danger Dan, and you are watching the Mama Tried Flat Out Friday podcast. Except for this weekend, I have taken over the broadcast. And I do apologize, we were going to do this on a stage and let you guys witness it, but I took over and just started calling the shots and brought us down into the green room here at the Rave Ballroom. The Rave, the Eagles Ballroom. Uh, this show is brought to you by Harley Davidson. They, uh, they stepped up and helped me get my Pan America back from South America so that you could see it this weekend at the Mama Tried event. Uh, today's first guest is Brad Richards. He's head of design over at Harley Davidson. And uh, man, we talk about everything from his first Indian flathead to, you know, how they, w the, the process in going from, you know, the idea of building a new adventure bike to, you know, you know, the steps that it took to get it on the streets and in my hands. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, today, all the guests are going to get a helmet from Bell which is really rad. I mean, you got to cover that dome when you're rolling down the road. So if you want to hear any more of my podcast, you can go to DangerDanceTalkShop.com or look up Danger Dance Talk Shop anywhere you listen to podcasts. Uh, and let's get into this segment with Brad Richards. Brad Richards. Yeah. It's nice to have you. Dan, here. what's your last name? Hard Dick. Hard Dick? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. H-E-R-D-I-C-K. Okay. All right. Hard Dick. Where are you from? Texas. Nice. Look, he just right, immediately took over. See that? He's like, see, it's live. Oh, now I got, I got I'll, I'll this. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. <laughs> no, that's one thing I love. I don't do a great job sometimes of, like, preparing people, but that's mm -hmm. how I want this to go. I don't want it to be mm -hmm. like, I'm not interviewing you. We're just catching up. Yeah. These guys are making it weird, but we'll just ignore them and I got it. just go Let's on. Do it. Well, I've always wanted to meet you. Um, I think you have one of the most interesting Instagram feeds I've seen. It's, it's and, curated that way. And I you were put like a lot of, of work into it. You were one of the first guys to embrace Pan America in a, in a Harley Davidson way. Yeah. And when I say that, like in a traditional core Harley Davidson way. Well, you know, and that's it, interesting because I uh, I didn't ever think the motor company would put out a new bike that I wanted. You know, yeah. like I just didn't. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I yeah, yeah. fucking love my chopper and yeah, I got yeah, yeah, yeah. some vintage dirt bikes. You know, like I was, Yeah. yeah. you know. But then really what happened was is a guy from BMW sent me an email. Okay. He was like, hey, you want to come wreck our motorcycles? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So he yeah. set up a deal in California at Rawhide Place. Oh, yeah, Rawhide. That's and I place. rode my chopper from Texas in we December. Yeah. And then when I showed up on the chopper, they were like, what? The, who the fuck is this guy on a Harley, you know? And, mm -hmm. and they look it up, and they're like, fuck, BMW's paying for all this. Like, he just gets to wreck the motorcycles. Right, right. And I left there going, holy fuck, that bike's amazing. Like, I, mm -hmm. it just opened my mind up, and then... You know, really, I was like, "Fuck, I'm gonna buy, a, I'm gonna buy a BMW GS," you know. Mm -hmm. And then I was riding, I was going to Daytona later that spring, and I went, I was headed to the Haynes place in Birmingham, you know, to hook up with them oh, and yeah, do yeah, a yeah. big Daytona trip. Some of the best guys. And on the way there, I was like, you know what? Harley's fixing to put out a pan. Oh no, you know what it was? Before I went, you guys released the video with Momoa mm -hmm. and tying the bike to the Heritage, and mm -hmm, I was like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. "Fuck," you know, like I'm. Got a built a living off of Harley, and I've given you guys like five hundred dollars over the, the course of my life. You know, like so. I was like, this is a, yeah, this is a good way for me to like show support That's for awesome. this new step in a different direction. Yeah, and uh, so I call up my buddy at a dealership. I'm like, hey, I want the first one that shows up in Texas. Yeah, and I was like, I don't want any deals or nothing. Like, you know, give me a friend yeah. deal, but I want to yeah. like get it and communicate to my people yeah. exactly what I experienced. You know, right. I don't want to have any. Yeah. So he was like, all right, cool. And I guess you guys did a, what was it? Like a, you sent out a bunch of units for people to test ride. We did some of that, yeah. And he calls me up. He's like, hey, you want me to set you up to test ride? And I was yeah. like, I don't want to know that I'm buying the inferior motorcycle before I buy it. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just want that bike. And yeah. so then when I finally came in and I went and got it and fucking rode it to Tennessee around Loretta Lens, I was like, yeah. holy fuck. Like I. I guess I just didn't expect it to be so close and badass as the BMW. Like, yeah. and it was like yeah. way beyond, dude, and it's so sick and put the flames on it. Like mm -hmm. right out of the gate, I've just yeah. fucking been loving it. Well, when we, when we set out to design Pan America, we, we were thinking about you. Yeah. <laughs> were you? We were thinking about Dan Harddick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you nailed we, it. I know. No, but so when, so if you look at the adventure touring, like that segment and the, like those riders, the Power Rangers, it's, yeah, 
We call it the, the Gore-Tex Vortex. The Gore-Tex Vortex. I said right. what we don't want to end up with is a motorcycle that is going to be kind of in that, in that going to be categorized in that space. We have to sort of do it our own way. Mm -hmm. And um, so we worked. Um, I worked really closely with um, a guy named John Beckafee at the time who was helping us. Well, he's running marketing for Harley Davidson at the time. I think that's what he was doing. Um, and we said we created this. He, he asked me, he's like, well, you know, what is the what is the Pan America like the rider in the in your mind, the design team's mind? Like, who's the rider? And I said, well, it's not the Gore-Tex Vortex. It's it's a Harley guy that has been looking for a sort of a new adventure and a new way to kind of experience Harley in different places. It's it's a bloody Carhartt wax cotton jacket with bourbon spilled on it and whiskey yeah. and muddy. And it's a ripped up Pendleton blanket and it's Ray-Bans. It's not you know, whatever else, Oakley's, you know. And so I used all these signals. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. John goes, well, you're describing like an outlaw explorer. And I said, that's that's our guy and that's our girl. Yeah. So it, we really wanted to make sure that we, we created something that allowed our people to embrace riding anywhere they wanted to go, any kind of terrain, anywhere, any place, which is exactly what you did with the motorcycle. So that's why when I, when I told you the other day that you, you're sort of our our key per persona for that motorcycle, <laughs> it is. It's it's uh, it's Danger Dan. Well, it's been awesome. You know what's really cool is you nailed all that, and and getting to take it like the places I've been, South America, Central America, around America, mm -hmm. and the reactions I get, just like you know, you're it's still part of that the Harley people. Like, yeah, I mean that's the greatest thing about the brand is everybody in it, that right. loves the right. fucking badge, and you're right. it's like I was just. You know, traveling and meeting the people. I didn't even have to learn Spanish in South America because right. most right. of the people that wanted to come up and talk, the bike they'd business. gone out of their way yeah. to learn English because they love Harley so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's one of the first things I learned about the brand. When I was in my probably mid-20s, I bought a Ro Road King was the second new Harley I bought or the second Harley Davidson I bought. I bought a big twin flathead a little earlier, a ULH, a 39 ULH, and turned that into a, a bobber. Um, when I was a little bit younger, but the first new Harley I bought was a was a Road King, and I and the first summer I had it, I worked at Ford Motor Company at the time, didn't work for Harley, but the Ford would close for a couple of weeks in the summertime to like repave the parking lots in the building I worked at, like the the design center, mm -hmm. and um, and so we just had like I was cut loose for a couple of weeks, and I had been recently divorced, and I was sort of in that mindset where it's like I I need to like think about what I want to do next with my life. And so I just packed the bike and, and took off by myself with a tent and, you know, how you do it and just took off. Um, I wanted to see Bonneville. I wanted to see Sturgis. I wanted to see Portland and I wanted to see California. And so I just with no like plan, I just headed west, you know. And you're right. You go. You, I would find myself in these. I tried to stay off the interstates as much as I could. And you find yourself at night, either in like little diners in the morning or at night in a bar. You know, and you don't, I, what I, what my, my MO was always to pitch a tent behind a church, but not okay. on Saturday night. Yeah. Not so, on Saturday yeah, night. Yeah. So it was always a safe place to sleep. And, but, but half the time, if you're just, if you're in some kind of public place in a little town, someone is like, oh, is that your bike? They all want, it's, it's the badge, like you said. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, you just stay on the couch. Yeah. Or I've got a room or we have, you know, whatever. And so uh, there was a lot of times where I didn't even like, I was sleeping with a roof over my head that I didn't pay for. And it was just because someone was like, oh, you're on your own. You're riding across. And oh, my dad did that. Or I did that when I was younger. Or, yep. And it's just, I had no idea how powerful the brand was in that way. And it's just like, the community is so awesome. And, you know, I'm not like, I wasn't like, I'm not, I'm still not, I would say a typical Harley person. I don't have any tattoos. You know, I have to keep my hair pretty short for my job. You really? Know, I'm kind of working for the In man. the design team, you got to have <laughs> short hair? But, you know, I'm not like- Is that to gain respect among your peers? Is that what it is? <laughs> no. I don't know what I'm, I don't know. I'm letting it go now a little bit, but um, anyway, um, yeah. So it's just people just like, they want to like know your story. They want to tell you their stories about the about That's the brand. really what they want to do. Right. And yeah. it's like, it's this fabric that's been woven probably since it's 120 years old, you mm -hmm. know, and we're all part of it now. Yeah. You know, whether- whether you're being filmed or, you, you know, you're an influencer or, or, you know, it doesn't matter if you're just doing it, you're part of the family. And yeah. that's what was so refreshing about it because I did, I did ride other brands. Mm -hmm. I rode BMW. I had a BMW. It was my first bike that an old vintage BMW that I restored. That's how I, that was my first motorcycle. And the BMW crew, they were, they were nice enough, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like, 
you know, hey man, let's show you how to do it. Or, you know, I remember just struggling restoring that BMW. It was a 1955 R50 and trying to find parts. And so I'm like, God, this is a pain in the ass. It took me three or four years to restore it. And then I rode it every day back and forth to work. And then eventually that bike led to somebody who had a huge collection of old Harleys. And I, and that's how I got into old Harleys. And I've told the story a few times, but when I started to restore that big twin flathead, that 39, the difference between restoring a BMW with that crew, no offense to BMW riders and Harley folks, is that when I started restoring that bike, everybody wanted to help me. And I got, I was getting parts. I was getting like, let me, let me hone your cylinders. You know, and it was like, it was just because I was like some young kid who was interested in Harley Davidson. It was like the whole, like the gates came down and it was like that bike restored itself, you know, yeah. because everyone just wanted to help me. And I'd never had experienced anything like that with any other brand. So that, that, that set the hook, man. Yeah. It was like, I'm, this is, this is a brand that this is my brand. Yeah. So I'm sure a lot of people probably have that same kind of experience. Well, it absolutely <clears throat> it, going down to South America, they, they have to want it so much more, you know, like mm, it's pretty mm. easy up here, you yeah, know, right. like, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Those people down there, I mean, yeah. they're fighting for it, even if they don't got it, you know, like, right. There's a, there's some guys I rode with in Argentina and there's a brand from Argentina called Zanella and they have this bike called the Patagonia Eagle. And it's, you know, yeah. every guy who can't have a Harley down there, that's, oh, they okay. got a Zanella, you know? All right. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but yeah, they just, the, the badge. It brought so many good experiences down there. It was, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. So, so Dan, when did you start, you know, when, when did Harley come into your world, your life? Um, so I had a kid, mm -hmm. I got my wife pregnant. We didn't yeah. have much money. So yeah. I went to Wyoming <clears throat> and got a job on a rig yeah. and worked a whole winter, saved up a bunch of money. Yeah. And, uh, I came back to town and, and I was like, man, I can't look like a pussy in front of my kid. I got to have a motorcycle. <laughs> so I told my wife this uh, and I start looking. She's like, just do whatever you need to do, you know? Right. Like, so you did it for the kids. I did it for the kid, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, then I had a friend and yeah. I was looking at, <clears throat> you know, something real cheap. And my buddy Greg, mm -hmm. he was like, do not fucking buy anything but a Harley Davidson, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay. I ended up buying like a 2007 Heritage Classic. Yeah. Fucking rode the piss out of that. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Spent yeah. all the money I saved up that winter. We were broke again, and, and mm -hmm. then the kid came. But I had a bike, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Set a good example for him. That's amazing. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, for, thank you for that, future customer. <clears throat> That's awesome. But you know that bike immediately, you know, fuck, I, it opened up so many doors immediately. Yeah, yeah. You know, like right there in my area, people that had been around me for a long time that I didn't know, and yeah, as soon as I had that bike, we just started meeting. Yeah. It's the power of the brand for sure. Started working on it, traveling on it, mm -hmm. strapped a guitar to it, went on toward the country. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. That's yeah. actually how I heard about this show. Oh, is that right? I was playing a bar in uh, in Madison called the Wisco, mm -hmm. and I rode in. It was fucking. It was in November. The band was like, "You're riding touring the Midwest, and you're gonna bring your." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. fuck yeah." Dude, the fucking that ride to the Wisco was brutal. I mean, I showed up at the bar. I think I just dropped my bike on the ground. My hands were just stuck like this. I yeah. go in and order a beer and I have to drink it. I, yeah. I can't even use my hands. <clears throat> and then some dude named Danny comes in with a leather jacket, you know. He yells at the bartender. He's like, there's a fucking bike out here with Texas plates on it. Yeah. Where is, oh, there he is. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and the bartender had a panhead that he had ridden mm. to the bar that night. You know, he didn't live oh, very really? far. Yeah, but he rode it. And, uh, he told me about the Mama Tried show that his friends do in February. And I'm like, fuck, I, it's hard to ride in November. Why the fuck would you have a bike show in February? <laughs> you know? Yeah, because nobody else has one in February. And uh, yeah. so the next gig was in Chicago. But the next morning, I met up with him and we rode straight to Milwaukee. For the went show? Went to the museum. No. Oh, no, this, was, just, this, was, this was November. Yeah, he just wanted to, he was like, come on, I want to go yeah. with the ride. So he took me like, yeah. It was funny. We were pulling into town. He actually opened my eye up to something that I hadn't been doing at the time. I would always try and like, if we were going to play, you know, and if we were playing in Chicago, I'm going to stop and get gas outside of Chicago. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling him before we get to Milwaukee, like, dude, pull over. Let's get some gas before we get into the city. And he's like, no. And he takes me to the ghetto, dude, like <laughs> the dirtiest gas station. I mean, you could have gotten anything on that corner. <laughs> and he was like, I just wanted you to see this. You know, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, I'm so glad you did that. Like I, yeah, you know, yeah. and then we went straight to the museum yeah. and he's like, you want to check it out? And I was like, no, let's keep riding, you know? 
And then here we are like eight years later. Yeah. Nine years, seven yeah. years. I don't know. It's pretty cool. It is. That cool. guy did yeah. finally reach out. I told that story once and yeah, he sent me an email. I oh, can't is that right? remember his name. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so designing a bike, like how, did, so with the Pan America, you, you, you reached out to the marketing guy. You like, how did, how did, what's the very beginning processes? I mean, in who decided that you were even going to do something yeah. in that realm? So, yeah, so the ideas for the motorcycles inside the company can come from a variety of sources. So we have, um, of course, we have folks that are at dealerships, like that, that are responsible for, you know, keeping the dealership stocked and maintaining the relationships with all of our dealerships all over the world, mm -hmm. the regional, the regional folks, regional okay. commercial folks. And they may hear of a bike or maybe there's, they're getting some feedback on how to improve one of our motorcycles or they see something that's happening with trends or whatever in their area. Mm -hmm. So they could get back to us and say, hey, what about something like this, for instance? We have product planning people as well that kind of monitor what's happening in the world of motorcycles <clears throat> and looking at our portfolio. And they might say, hey, we haven't updated this bike in a while. We need to think about this bike. Mm -hmm. And then you have the, you have the design team, uh, which is my team, and we do, we do this um, work called ADI. It's called Advanced Design and Ideation. And it's where- Ideation? Ideation. And really all it is, it's, it's, it's my, so I have a 25 person design team. Everybody pretty much rides, pretty much. Um, we're super close to the customers. A lot of us are super passionate Harley riders even before we worked here. Mm -hmm. Some folks came from other brands, but that's okay. You gotta have a good kind of worldview and kind of open-minded approach with your talent. Absolutely. Um, and we go to a lot of shows, like Mama Tried. We go to Born Free. We go to Fokker Say. We go to places all over the world. Fokker Say? Fokker Say, yeah. It's in Europe. It's, okay. it's a big one. <clears throat> um, and um, Sturgis, of course, and Daytona, the kind of the classics. And we're always looking for, you know, we, we look for what our customers are doing with the motorcycles. Some of the, like the, some of the most successful motorcycles the, the motor company has ever created were in some ways, relatively low hanging fruit. Someone once told me, somebody who worked on the design team with Willie said, you know, the biggest hits are a lot of times the lowest hanging fruit. And he's, and he was right. So fat boy was something they saw, you know, outside was happening. So there were, there was a dealership who was building kind of modernizing a heritage to look like that. And that kind of sparked the idea inside the studio at that time. Um, street glide was the same kind of situation somebody was cutting down electro glide and kind of making it feel more custom and getting rid of the tour pack and painting everything you know sort of darker colors that's where that all came from um and you know like bikes like lowrider st that we just revealed the same thing we were watching what folks were doing in southern california with you know fxrs and dynas and so on mm -hmm. and saying hey how do we take their idea and make it better but then make it available to everybody to sort of embrace because it's a great idea you know, yeah push rod performance and so um so this ADI process my team does, we, 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 we take a certain part of the year where we, we put it, we, we, we have some time where they can stop working on whatever they're working on for a second. Um, that's kind of already in the hopper and think about new things. Like what are we okay. seeing? And so they'll do, like we'll, a big we'll, think tank. we'll look like a 300 sketches. They're all sketching. They're all, they're all making drawings of motorcycles. Okay. And we have a big board inside the studio and we put everything up and then we all stand around as a team and just everyone kind of defends their, you know, their ideas and pokes at everybody else's and supports everybody else's. And eventually we go from 300 sketches to one sketch and we get like the sketch. That's how we do it. Um, Pan America, I would have to say, came from the, pro the product planning folks at the time. Okay. Um, in all honesty, they, they were seeing that the only... One of the only segments in motorcycling at that time that was growing was adventure touring. Yeah. And so they said, we're not playing in this space, you know, and, and we also noticed, you know, we spent some time at Rawhide, like you did, mm -hmm. talking to those guys and, and with other adventure riders. And we, and we realized that the path to adventure touring for a lot of new adventure touring riders was coming off a of Harley Davidson touring motorcycle. So either a road glide or a street glide or, an, or electric glide or a limited. They usually had, they had a BMW GS, they had a Harley big touring bike in the garage. That's, mm -hmm. what, our, that's what our research showed. So we're like, this is kind of a no brainer. Yeah. And the, the, the trick inside, the, the, the hard part inside the company was there were certain folks that really wanted us to duplicate the GS 
they said that's what they want just give them that you know and and my from surely there was some pushback too like no that's not what we well do. it came i would say a lot of it yeah i mean there there were all kinds of opinions inside the company and yeah. and to be honest they all had valid points you know but there's just no way that i was going to design a i want to copy anything mm -hmm. you know so um if we're gonna if we're gonna do it we're gonna do it our way and i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it to the ethos of harley davidson and do it so it appeals to somebody like you who knows the brand and is you know passionate about the brand so we you know so that's what we set out to do so it's got it's got you know it's got if you if you look at the dna of pan america it's the same dna that's in the 36 knucklehead it's the same dna that's in a road glide mm -hmm. you know powertrain on display first thing you see is the crown jewel yeah rest of the motorcycle is the setting that we put that jewel in um you have to have like teardrop fuel tank shape front fairing if you're going to do a fairing it better look a little bit like a road glide fairing or something that we love and the, you know our customers love yeah. So it's putting all these bits together and, and then we kind of had the rough sketch and then we spent another six months just refining it and making clay models and moving things around. Making clay models. We use clay. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we do full size clay models. It's, you know, it's fun. Clay allows you to, ch you can sculpt the fuel tank and mm -hmm. then an hour later completely change it and look at it and go, oh, what do you think? Mm -hmm. So clay allows you to quickly, you know, um, visually see it, visually see know, it, and change it quick. And, yeah. yeah, and then we can scan it digitally and put it into a tube, and it becomes surface, and it's it's a whole process. But um, that's how we do it, and it's just it's a lot of iteration. It's a lot of what I think a lot of Harley folks who build choppers and bikes, like the ones in the show today, mm -hmm. you're putting stuff together, mocking it up, getting back and looking at it, having a beer, you know, yeah. kind of taking it outside, get 20, 30 feet, 100 feet back. Is that seat right? You know, same conversations that you all have. And then I had before I was a member of the com of the company, um, same conversations I used to have. Just a lot of looking, staring, 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 mm -hmm. and then just trying to get everything just right and nailing the, every little new, and then look at every angle. And so it's all the same stuff. We just happen to have, you know, people that are professionally trained to do it and to help us do it, and a facility that's really built for just doing that. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 it's. I mean, it's a great it's a great job. So you guys come up with a design, and yeah. then. And then the engineers figure out how to make the rest of it happen. And then they yeah. come back and say, hey, this this is a great idea, but, we, you know, yeah, exactly if it doesn't right. work this way, Yeah, pull out your clay. Or the, or the engineers may came, come back and say, you know what, we like this, but what about this? We'd make it even better. And so, that, and so they're helping us, like, you know, everyone's working together. The marketing team comes in, gives us, like, how do we think about it? So before the bike's even done, you know, hey, Brad, what, what's the narrative here? Like, mm -hmm. what is this, how does this speak to the story of Harley Davidson? Let's start thinking about that like the outlaw explorer conversation we had mm -hmm. with pan america we were before the bike was even done we had we we knew you <laughs> and so we had photos of you and we had like here's what this person it's what their lifestyle is like and we i mean it's crazy how dialed in we get it but you have to because there's there's so much money at stake and there's yeah you know, the, the brands at so stake. how long was the process <clears throat> it can take like a motorcycle design can take anywhere from a year and a half to four years Wow. It's depending on the scope. I mean, even like this one was like, Pan America was this is long, so different. Pan than America what? was, it was in the, yeah. I can't really tell you how long, you know, <laughs> I'm sure someone from BMW is probably listening, but they know, you know, it's a oh, ground up motorcycle takes longer than a lot longer than just changing the, yeah, the paint on a fuel tank. Yeah. yeah. Was that, so was that drivetrain? Was that in the works already or did that? It was all part of it. Uh, so Rev Max, we knew we had, that's the That's name right. It. it was from the, yeah. That's in the V rod. No, no, it's totally not, different. Not a single shared part. Really? No one. Everyone says that. I don't I know where just, that, yeah. yeah, it's a sixty-degree V-twin, but there's no shared parts. We okay. certainly there were certainly learnings from V-Rod that went into that powertrain. Okay, but just learnings, just like intelligence. I feel so much better about that not being associated with V-Rod at all. Yeah, why is that? <laughs> it's just like a weird the V-Rod. It's just like no, you know. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you. Um, I there's there's some motorcycles in in our history where it's really interesting to me to hear people talk about why they love them or why they don't. And I'm not buying or selling, by the way. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really a V-Rider. Rider. I think now, like before I just, they didn't do nothing for me, but like now meeting, like there's cult following out there. I know. Like there are people, I know. the weirdest people I know love V-Rod. So I know. It's, it's, I uh, know someone just contacted me the other day. Um, were you, you going to do it again? Um, well, I can't talk about product, but there's no, pl no, there's no plans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not shared at all. So that drivetrain yeah. was developed as well to go. It was completely separate. Yeah, yeah Rev Max was separate. Um, 
Speaking, though, of shared parts on powertrains, did you know that the pushrod collars on a Milwaukee 8 are dash 36 part number? That's no. my favorite thing, that that is a 1930, that was on a knucklehead. That's where that part was engineered, and no we're still using way. it on the current yeah, motor. <clears throat> that's wild. Nobody knows that, but it, if you, if you know, I mean, that's a whole other level of fetish with the brand. When you start <laughs> looking at part numbers and like when stuff was made. Uh -huh. But I love that about the brand, that we can have a part from 1936 on our 2000. That's insane, I really. Don't, I don't know. I mean, what other company can say that? I mean, it's just, yeah, anyway. So people say we, you know, we've evolved too far and stuff, but hey man, there's still parts on the, the damn motor from 1936. I mean, you know, yeah, it's gonna, like, there's a lot of people that wouldn't be happy if you didn't put out a shovel head next year. You know, like, yeah. or, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know how. Oh man, it's a, it's, so yeah, some days it's, it's a tough job. Um, it's a great job, but when I say tough is like reading comments in social media. You can't do that. I know. I don't. don't and, do I tell, and I tell other executives. Post and ghost. If you're going to get on there, just post and ghost. That's a great way to, to do it. Yeah. You can't because it's just, it's a, it's a rabbit hole. It's like, look, it's like staring at a stock price every day. Well, it's and the, the most thing. negative energy is yeah. what, what comes out the, yeah. the most on that. But shit. people are so passionate about the brand and I get it. You know, I get it. But. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things that they say, like you'll read and say, and it's just like, oh man, if they only knew like this, this or that, or like what's coming or what we just did, you know, or what the- yeah, You the can't tell story. them, you can't talk to all of them. <laughs> I know, man, it's, yeah. it is. It just eats your stomach lining away. <laughs> yeah, no, you got motorcycles to design, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exa so what's exactly. next? What's what's the next one, the next big project? Well, I can't, we can't talk about future products, but um, we're always looking. We go to shows like this yeah. and try to find you know, ideas. Oh, I got a question about the yeah. back to painting market. Did it hit as well as you guys thought it was going to? It, it probably hit? hit better than we thought. Really? We didn't think we'd have the number one selling adventure touring motorcycle the first year in North America. Mm -hmm. We did not think we were gonna. It was gonna be that popular that quick. I knew it. Did you when you wrote it? Yeah. No, no, no. Before I wrote it, just knowing like the oh, people, the, like there were so many people that would love an adventure bike, but they're not gonna <laughs> join the Gore Tex Vortex. That's right. They can't have a freaking BMW. Yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. there was a lot. I mean. People out there building adventure bikes out of a Harley. I mean, yeah. I built one out of a sports dream. Yeah. I definitely wasn't the first person to do that. That's right. Yeah. And there was just like, not really a need. You know, we didn't need it, but yeah. there's there's definitely that yeah. explorer in the brand that wanted to go further. You know, yeah, you're riding right. dirt bikes. Right. You know, yeah. and you're right. It was happening everywhere. Every, I mean, there were. All over the world, people were taking sportsters and taking them off road, or taking just Harleys in general. Just Harleys in general. Yeah, and you, I think it just took. You know, it just we had to kind of get over our internal sort of like, what is a Harley in our own heads inside the company? There was a moment where we had to all think about that. And I'll admit, I was even a bit hesitant at first because it was one of the first projects that was handed to me when I got to Harley. It was like, all right, we're going to do an adventure bike. I right? mean, I was hesitant. I'm like, I would, it wouldn't gonna, even register. Like, how are we going to do this? You guys are putting it out and I was not even thinking about <laughs> buying it. Like I had, that never even crossed my mind. And then, yeah. it, and then literally riding the BMW is what opened my mind to go, oh, maybe I, I could yeah. buy a new. I could buy a new bike like yeah. this. And, no. you know? I mean, I think it's open. It's like it's opened up. It's just there's a whole new batch of customers that are now like, oh, Harley Davidson. Mm -hmm. And that's really what the job of all of us are trying. That's what we're trying to do inside the product development side of the company is we're trying to get people to think a little bit differently about the brand. And um, Harley Davidson can be so much to so many people. I th I think what what I notice folks struggle with is that. And this is really our, the corporation's own, you know, this is our own fault in many ways. I wouldn't call it, maybe it's not a fault, but the, you know, there was so much money to be made in the late nineties and early two thousands with mm -hmm. sort of the persona of the Harley rider. Yeah. And it was very much based in heritage. It was like, it's but the leather, yeah, it you know what I mean? And <clears throat> we just played into that because mm -hmm. it, because that was what people wanted. But it became so big that that's all anybody can think about when they think Harley riders. They think that particular person. And if you go back into the 70s and 60s and 50s, Harley was like so many other things. You know, we were we were off road. We were camping. We were racing. Yeah, we were on the salt flats. We were cruising. Um, so the company has been incredibly innovative and we had a really wide variety of riders at that point. But when the 90s hit, late 80s through the 90s and into the early 2000s, it just became like one, like a Harley rider is just, can only be this one person. Yeah, you're and, right. And that's what we've been fighting ever since. So I uh, read a book 
what's it called? Building, rebuilding the brand or rebuilding the brand. Bad. You familiar with this book? No. Is it, a, is it about Harley? Yeah, yeah. It was a guy that worked okay. in the, the okay. marketing department. Oh, yes, department, I heard about this. Yeah. You know, and just talked about, you know, yeah. when Willie G bought the company back and, yeah. you know, they just redesigned the advertising and the, the people that they were marketing to. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, it was like pretty much the stuff that they were running from. Like, we don't want to be involved with the one percenters, you know, yeah, early yeah. on. And yeah, 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 now yeah. they're like, no, 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 you can be a one percenter on the weekend, you know? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. A really interesting perspective. Uh, yeah. It's a good book. Yeah. And I mean, we we embrace that side of the culture. I mean, there is an outlaw aspect to Harley Davidson that will never go away. And we don't want it to ever go away because it is about. It is as cliched as it sounds. It's about freedom and, and making your own decisions in your life and kind of living the way you want to live. Mm -hmm. I want to work for a company that you know that supports those things. You yeah. Know? But there's also you can go too far and it can get it can go off into a tangent where it's like it starts to alienate everybody else and it's there, there's one type of person and so mm -hmm. on. So well, and that's yeah. that's funny because I I get that a lot, especially like on this trip. I went out of my way, which is something I don't normally do traveling in America. It's like. Like when I would see other people on bikes, I would just like, if there was a group of GSs, I would roll up yeah. and just start talking in English to them. They, yeah. you know, yeah. and they'd be like, you know, they don't understand me. And then they yeah. see the bike and they're like, wait a second, that's, that's the Pan America, you know? Yeah. And they're like, yeah. we're not really communicating, but I can just see it. They're like, yeah, holy yeah. shit, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and then somebody will come up and be like, man, we didn't really expect to see this right. or you or. But right. you're also exactly what we would expect to see. If the, you know, like <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. it was a funny thing. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. it's tricky when you when when you when the world assumes there's only one customer and you're trying to do, you're trying to bring new people into the brand and mm -hmm. you're trying to you know go into a new a new segment like like adventure touring and the expectations are exactly that like how are you going to do it and but you it's you you know that they're all all walks of life. Can love Harley, like can embrace Harley Davidson. You know, mm -hmm. whether you show it on the outside or not, you could have a Maverick outlaw streak inside you and work on Wall Street. I don't know, you know. Yeah. And so, to, just to be that narrow-minded to think it's just this one thing, that's what kind of bums me out. And I think it's in, in many reasons, it's what kind of concerns me a little bit about our, you know, the world right now. Is that? Yeah. Well, people, I think they also like see themselves in the brand so much, and when yeah. they see the brand do something that. They're not sure of, you know, it just yeah, like, it's like, what are they doing? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. I don't want to be associated with that. It's yeah. like kind of like the electric bike. I'm like, yeah. wait a second. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's tough. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure that there was like even releasing it. You're like, fuck, we don't want to like make people. We don't want to run no. people off that are here. Right. But, uh, you know, how yeah. can we enlighten them to show yeah. them that this well, is part of it? Well, look what we did right after Pan America. And it was very intentional. Electric Glide Revival. So everyone's everyone's freaking out about electric and adventure touring. Like that one, I shouldn't say everybody, but that one core customer is really concerned about what's happening with Harley Davidson. And so Electric Glide Revival was a way for us to just say, no, we know exactly what the traditional Harley. What is, I don't know what that is. Oh, you haven't seen the, so Electric Glide Revival is a, it's a, it's a bike that we put out. Oh, it's the. That's with, a nod to the 69. The one bacon bot. Dude. Yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the blue and white one. Yeah, but yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, so that was a way for us to go, no, we still love this too. This means everything to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're never going to abandon that, you know. Lowrider ST, same thing. So it, it I think the, what we learned there is that it's in the, in the portfolio, you have to have the right balance of bikes to make sure that you're not alienating anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you're bringing new people in. And but at the same time, you're making sure that the folks that have been there forever have some really, really yeah. sort of, you know, juicy bits to, to bite into. So when I, you know, was thinking about buying that BMW, I think that one of the reasons I was thinking about going that extreme was just because I know people would just assume I'm just like a chopper guy, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and I'm like, no, I love all <laughs> motorcycles, you know, I, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. dirt bikes of multiple brands and yeah, yeah. You know, I'll just, I'll buy, I'll really throw them off and get this BMW, yeah. you know? Uh, Which is, I mean, at, and, and, and that's really the, that's the ethos of Harley Davidson is just doing what you want to do, right? I yeah. mean, so, and, and, and in a way it's what it's about being, it, it's American. It couldn't be anything more American than that, right? That's exactly right. Dude. Yeah. So, um, anyway, it's all, it's all good, man. Well, Brad, thank you for sitting down. With yeah, me, it was man. great to finally meet. I you. want to do this again. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, I would be I as mean, we as we move along this road of life. And let's uh, do it. I would love I to. I can't check wait back to in. see what you guys do next. And yeah, we'll turn these off, and you can tell me. <laughs> no problem. I'll give you all the details. Thanks, all right, man. Good to see you. Nice to meet you.